Good evening and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. My name is Jonathan Collins and this is my son Bailey. How's it going everybody? Welcome to Surefire Wednesdays and we have a great recipe for you guys tonight. One that I'm especially pumped about. Are you looking at this? This looks like I just went to the local butcher and I found the most beautiful roast and I brought it home here. This came out of my freezer. Now, we are the local butcher. We are the local butcher. <laughs> we are the butcher in charge. Now, Dakota's going to be joining us here in a minute. But what we want to tell you is don't leave because we have some fantastic giveaways. First of all, tonight, we're going to be giving away a $50 Bowtech gift card. To add to that, pick up that piece right there. This right here, we're making meatloaf tonight and this is a beautiful cast iron pan from Lodge that you can do meatloaf in. We're gonna do a two part, it's gonna be this. So it's gonna be a griddle and the, uh, and the uh, grill uh, combination with this beautiful uh, uh, meatloaf pan. Now listen, there's nothing like cooking with cast iron and our recipe tonight is very exciting because this was literally our very first whitetail and this is literally our very last our time. last piece <laughs> so it's a good thing now listen five days five days from opening day that's right here in ontario and bailey's up so uh bailey we got uh, we've got some really great stuff to share with you tonight yep. there's dakota good evening everybody welcome to surefire wednesdays yeah we're not we've got that oh okay, okay got so it. get over oh, there we got it done but <laughs> welcome anyways from me it's special for me i know that <laughs> so we've got uh, our trail cams up. We've been watching right. these beautiful white tails all summer long. It's so exciting seeing the way oh, they develop. Like seeing them develop is the most exciting thing. That's why even if you can just get your trail cams out, even if it's too early, it's just fun to watch the progression of each deer coming yep. through their stages and then on opening day, you sit there and you go, oh, that's Riverman. That's, you know, you can name them and that's what's great about yeah, it. Right? You, get to, you get to know the animals that are on the property that you hunt. And uh, one thing I know tonight that I'm especially pumped about is we're going to do a couple experiments. One is with the new canoes we got from Eskif Canoes. We're going to be banging on that tonight to show how strong it is. Yeah. And Dakota has a really cool beer demonstration yep. that he's yeah. going to do. <laughs> so he's going to balance three bottles of beer. No, it's not no, that. No, You're going to no. have to stay and wait, and then we'll show you what's going on. Yeah. So the first thing I want to do, you know what? I want to get your mind wrapped around how incredible this wild to table story is yep. wild to table is all about you taking control of what you're eating yep. right yep. i mean literally we were never expecting to be set on fire like this when it came to wild yeah. game yeah Absolutely i mean like not. we've tried some of like the most amazing cuts of meat in our you know through our travels of chefs and honestly every single piece of game meat that we've had has blown everything that we've ever tried out of the water. Get that camera. I want them to see this up close. So while you're while he's grabbing the camera, listen, I want to tell you something. We're going to grind this. Now listen, honestly, I don't want to grind a roast. I want to, I want the garlic stuff and I want to roast it. I want to do all kinds of great things with it. But we wanted to do a meatloaf. Meatloaf is like pedestrian. It's like yep. common man's food. But you want to know what? Some nights, especially when it's fall, yep. and especially you got to have meatloaf. You know, what I was thinking about, too, is right before a hunt, especially as hunting season approaches, you want something like, kind of like what you would think pasta or chili or something that's going to stick to your ribs right before you get out in the field. And meatloaf is one of those things that will definitely do that. Absolutely. As well as 
packed with protein and energy for you guys to get out there. That's right. Now listen, Bailey, we've got the grinder actually in the refrigerator. So flip over there. He's going to grab the grinder. Now, if you can, uh, even if you're just grinding a little bit of meat, it's really important to chill. If you can, chill the grinder. Now what's that, what that's going to do, imagine you got some pretty good friction going on. So with that friction, you're going to get heat. It's going to begin to cook the meat. You want to make sure to really grind it without cooking it at all. I don't want to change the texture. It can make it tough. And listen, if you've got big batches to do, trust me, take a minute and go through a batch, maybe run for 15 minutes max, then take a break, clean your unit, and then chill it, throw it in the freezer for a little bit and get it chilled yeah. down. Especially if you're mixing fats, guys, you're gonna get a much better result if you cool that. Even if you have time, if you're thinking ahead, freeze it. Yep. You'd have to take less time stopping to freeze it again, you just get a lot better results. Yeah, so just if you're just joining us, I know that some people are getting text alerts. And listen, if you do want text alerts, remember all you have to do is text WATCH to 393939 in Canada and WATCH to 313131 in the United States. We want to say hi to everybody across yeah. all the platforms. We've got some great audiences tonight and yeah. we love the fact that you're joining us. Now don't remember, don't forget, we've got these cast irons with this beautiful cast iron pan which you'll love to make my uh, my uh, our nana would love to make the uh, banana bread in that and then we've got this beautiful grill pan so it's griddle on one side and it is grill on the other and we've got that $50 Botech gift card now let's look at the meat this is the money here I'm just gonna yeah. take my time because I want you to see the quality of this okay. uh, it's when we were doing this earlier, I got so I almost had a momentary lapse where I didn't want to make meatloaf and just eat this as a steak. We almost switched the quality of this meat is unbelievable. We literally almost switched this to a steak recipe. Okay, so that's a great point, though, Bailey. Listen, if you are just this is what you can do with these roasts. Are you looking at that? That is the best quality steak you'll ever try in your life. So uh, what I'm going to do? Have a look at that ground up up close there. And all I'm doing literally is just making nice little cubes here. And volume as well. We got this much ground just out of the other half of this roast that we have. Yeah, so it's just a single roast, more than enough to do a couple really beautiful meatloaves. Now, one thing you should be thinking, if you're going to make meatloaf, why only make one? Everything that gets goes into the freezer and gets frozen and reheated, whether it's chili or a pasta so sauce, better. whatever it is, it's going to be better. So why not make one? When you're making one, why not make two or three and make really good use? Now, I know all those of you who are... Now, this would apply. Imagine this with elk. We've had oh, some yeah. fabulous elk. Yeah. Mule deer. Don't just think whitetail. Let's go right across the big game spectrum. Now, listen. Tonight, later on, we're going to be talking to you about our trip up north. And we're yeah. going to be going up for bull moose. Imagine this. This would be amazing. Okay. With moose. Special. Okay? So uh, we're going to do a lot of meat. Loaves. Uh, <laughs> so literally, I'm just breaking this down so it goes into the uh, grinder nice and uh, easily. You can see the color and the texture of that. Yeah. And then, uh, Bay, what I'll get you to do is you can actually literally, while I'm doing this, just start grinding it. Start so, grinding it? So now, if you want, you could run this through a couple times through the grinder. But I'll tell you, it's so tender yeah. and it's so beautiful, it's not necessary. Now, you can see on the end there, let's have a quick look there, Dakota. We're using the small die. So that small die, that allows, that will give me a nice texture. Let's see here. Yep. Got that blade inside there to cut the meat as it comes off. You just shove it through the tube at the top here, and it feeds all of that beautiful meat down there and pushes it out into little, like almost like little sausage rolls, actually. Exactly. So what you, if you have one of these at home, it can, you know, if you don't, the reason we're showing you this is because you can go buy an exclusive grinder, but this attachment is incredible because you can just add it to an existing uh, stand mixer. Yep. Now we have a question. Yes, yeah, Cindy. Thank you. So this cut is off the hind quarter. It's one of the three muscles that are on the hind quarter. Uh, and so this is, yeah, you can see there, there's not a lot of connective tissue in there. Um, that we, we did remove most of the silver skin. You can see, just that, I'll just kind of pull this over and just have a look at the, the color and texture of that. But that's it right there. Have a look at that. That is absolutely spectacular. Yep. That to me, that looks, behaves, smells, and it does taste just yep. like a, just like a, a, a beef, uh, help me out here. Uh, just like a beef, uh, it'll come to me. No, it's okay. So let's start grinding. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, that was Yeah, great sorry. Another question. question. Go ahead, Seth. Mike Myers wants to know, how do you unfreeze your meat? Pop it in the fridge? 
Yeah, so uh, great question, Mike. Uh, if you're going to use the refrigerator to de-thaw, you're probably going to have to do it two days in advance, depending on the size. So uh, ground beef will probably thaw overnight. A whole roast like this will probably take two days. Now keep in mind, if it's ground beef already, or ground uh, venison already, you're gonna be able to thaw it and then use it in the next two to three days max. Now the roast, when it's thawed, it'll last three to four days for sure. Keep in mind, now have a look at that. Look at that beautiful, oh, it's so gorgeous. Really? That just makes me, honestly, I don't know, we should make, we, this makes me want to make sausage. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be great. Keep going. And uh, those are two very good questions. I just want to take that time to let all of our viewers know that as we go through the recipes tonight and everything like that, that there are absolutely no stupid questions. If you have a question, everybody starts somewhere, and if you have something to ask, just go ahead and ask, and we'll do our best to answer it for you. Okay. Yeah, and the other technique would be to thaw it in water, right? Yeah, so the second technique, especially if you have less time, so let's say you get home from work, you want to make something, like you see this recipe tonight, and you're like, oh my goodness, I want meatloaf. So take it out of the freezer, get it out of the package if you can, then put it in cold running water, literally once it's covered, just a slight drizzle. And what that will do is that will effectively, it'll actively thaw. That's the safest way to do it. You can use a microwave, I don't care for it. The, mo the best way is to get it thawed either in the fridge or in the sink. Yeah. And keep in mind, that's going to keep the texture intact. It's not, you're not going to get any partial cooking in the microwave. And we definitely want it to be fully thawed before this because you want to make sure that everything is more or less the same temperature. It'll make everything taste better. We'll get another look at this, guys. I just put the last of it in and watch as this falls out. Look how beautiful the texture of this meat is. I'm so sad that this is our last roast, but it also just ends me new beginnings, and that new beginning starts in five days. Listen, you better not miss. We need some uh, venison in the freezer. Yes, yeah, Cindy? I won't miss. Uh, this meat is from a buck. Great question. Uh, so this meat is from a buck. Now listen, we've got six tags. We've got three, uh, three, the three of us guys have tags, and then Alicia, my wife Cynthia, and my daughter Blair, they have tags as well. So we've got six whitetail tags, we've got three, no, four doe tags, and of course a standard buck tag uh, is what you get here in Ontario. So we got a lot of whitetail. It, the thing that I think we're most excited about for this season coming up is how many different applications we're going to get to, a chance to use. Uh, you know, instead of, you know, we're going to you know, teach the steaks and marinating, but we're going to get into sausage. We're going to actually make venison prosciutto. So we're literally going to take and we're going to dry this, we're going to cure it, and we're going to do some really, really cool techniques. Now, uh, yep, thank you, sir. So uh, just a quick reminder that if you have just joined us, um, uh, Surefire Wednesdays is all about hearing from you. So if you have any questions, please fire away. We'd love to talk to you about it, love to get your questions, and we appreciate the feedback. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know, how, how soon do you think, you think Dakota should get into pouring this beer? Or I think so, because I, no, I we better seen... You better flip, we gotta do some prep. You go grab the camera, we better prep. Okay. So we're gonna create a base, and the reason I'm saying we're gonna do this base, Bay, come on over here, I wanna show you this. So this is something, now, a lot of times in, in uh, meatloaf, you're going to put breadcrumbs. You see it all the time. So the breadcrumbs are very clear to soak up some of the fat, soak up some of the liquid. Now, what we do is very different. So what I've got here is I've got this incredible, just grab a spoon over there. I want you to taste this. So this is an incredible mixture. Stay right on that, Bailey. That is a mixture of brown rice. Uh, we've got some spelt, some black mm. sweet rice. Uh, and there's some split beans, sweet cargo yeah, rice. That looks good. Now, this mixture, I'm going to make sure, isn't that beautiful? Sure, already seasoned that? Yeah, already seasoned. And you know how we did this. So, just a quick note on this because I want to uh, encourage you. Now, this could just be done with water. But what really elevates it is to use chicken stock. Oh, okay. uh, you could use beef stock as well, but that's really nice. That's what I'm taking. And these babies, you always have to have these. Listen, if you can grow a bay leaf tree yep. in your backyard, I would definitely put one up. Yep. Uh, my they're, they're, survive, they're in raw form there. But that bay leaf is the easiest way to get incredible flavor into this rice. Now, the important thing, and I'll, you know what we gotta do, Code? Yep. We gotta get this out and, and cool. get it cooled. So just like when it comes time at uh, Thanksgiving to stuff the turkey, when we're putting this together, it's really important that everything gets cooled down. So we're gonna cook some ingredients, but we'll, if we put that with that with the meat and then throw it in there, yep. it takes 60 to 70 minutes to cook, and what can happen is you can get a danger zone. 
where bacteria can grow. Yep. So you want to avoid that. So literally, and the stainless steel bowl is perfect. Stainless steel bowl is perfect. If you use ceramic or something, it's going to hold that heat and keep it hot even longer. But the stainless is nice and thin. So oh, literally yeah. take, that smells so good. So again, this is something you'll hear us say again and again. It's all about the levels of flavor. Yep. So if you want to make exceptional food, think about what goes into it uh, before you uh, before you start. So this rice we're going to fold in. We're not just putting regular like mm -hmm. minute rice. We're not doing <laughs> so okay. But nothing against that. But guess what? This is the cheapest ingredient wild you can possibly rice. find. So wild rice, red rice, and just make it taste great. So yep. this uh, recipe will also be available. But basically, all we've done is some uh, chicken stock and yep. salt and the bay leaves, yep. and just cook it until it's nice and tender. And most Let's put time, that by the window. Eh? Most of the time, wild rice is. Uh, is local as well, right? So. It is, yeah. So, you know, those flavors, they go so well together with the venison. Um, when you think about venison, you know, uh, the one thing we get constantly is have this conversation about gaminess. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, gaminess is something that can be dealt with purely by how you care for yeah. it. You know, make sure you get rid of the excess fat. Yeah. Make sure you get rid of the connective tissue. And then when you're preparing it, make sure to complement yeah. it nicely. We're sitting here talking about white salad. You told me to put it by that window. I feel a cold breeze coming. I know. It's like fall's green. It's been like, it, the, the past few days, it's been like roughly like 35, 37 degrees in the middle of September and in Canada, which is like extremely abnormal. And this weekend, it's supposed to drop down to like, tonight's supposed to drop down to 10. So that's good. I think it's going to get those deer moving and we'll, I think we'll have lots of activity on the trail camp tonight. That's for sure. Absolutely. So we're going to put it. Yes, Cindy, we got a question. Great question. So uh, do you add pork or do you add the fat to get some more moisture in there? What we're going to do is we're actually going to use bacon. So we're going to use bacon in the mix. It's yeah. not necessary and I'll tell you why. It's a great question. It's Renee. Yeah. Renee, it's a great question because we are going to put this flavor base and that's the very next thing I'm talking about right now. And I'm going to have Dakota prepare some carrots. So we're doing carrots and celery and I've got some beautiful shallots. Now all of these three ingredients together, they have nice humidity, they're very moist, they're very fragrant, and they bring a ton of flavor and texture to it, but they will add moisture as well. And so one of the things that causes that dryness is when you have a super lean meat and there's not connective tissue and there's not fat, it will be dry. So one of the things you can do, and one of the things we do a lot, yeah. is we'll actually take, and we'll take a little patty of this, like right now, make a little patty, yeah. put it on the grill, and literally just cook it just like that, no seasoning or anything, yeah. and just taste it. And it'll tell me, you know, just like... see what it needs. Yeah, just see what it needs. If it seems dry, you can add uh, pork, you can just take, like you could take a pork tenderloin, yep. you could take a pork butt, you take pure pork fat, or even adding in some pork sausage could yeah, be really yeah. nice that as well. work as well. How do you want these cut? So let's do uh, paysan, so that's quartered, and a really fine slice. And then when he's done that, I'm gonna show you, uh, I'll show you this. Let's have a quick look here, babe. So I'm gonna take a, the, the whole celery, I'm just gonna take that bottom off. Look at that beautiful it's celery. Like a flower. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? And I'm just gonna roll these back. Now all these I'll save for other applications. But what I'm looking for here is the heart of the celery. That heart of the celery is gonna have so much flavor. It tastes so good. And uh, there's all kinds of other uses for the outside stocks. But this inner stock, man, this is where the flavor's at. So that's good. You can go a little thinner on that paysan, like three to four millimeters. And all I'm doing right now is literally just slicing this so that as we saute it, it's nice and fine and we can get lots of flavor development. Now, imagine if I put this in raw, how much flavor would we have? You'd have a little bit of flavor. A little bit, not very much. It needs to be developed. And what you get as you saute this is you get all of the liquid kind of coming out. Any of the sweetness, you know, begins to caramelize. And you can see we got a nice fine slice. This will break down nice and cleanly. And I'm going to leave all of those leaves in. Get all that incredible flavor. I just love that. These new knives are great, eh? Oh, I love them. Fine steel, it uh, makes all the difference. So I'm just going to heat my pan over medium heat. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil in that pan. So I've just got unsalted butter and I'll put about a tablespoon in. Don't need a lot. 
and then a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And I'll let that heat up. I want to make sure the pan is good and hot before I put any of the ingredients in. And let's go back and the last of these ingredients is the shallot. Now you could just use yellow onions or white onions, could be Vidalia, could be anything you've got. Just think flavor. That's all we're looking for here. I'm literally just going to take and trim these and then finely slice them. Beautiful. I love that smell. It smells so good. So the nice thing about shallots is they're very mild. Actually, I'll let you, uh, yep. yeah, go ahead. Nice fine slice. And then we'll transfer these all. These can go directly into the pan. We're going to saute those until they're nice and golden brown. And this is the flavor I'm base. The colors. Okay, good idea. Here, put that right there. Yep. This is the flavor base. So you have carrot, celery, onion, that beautiful, those beautiful shallots. And what that does is it just come, makes the, the meatloaf come to life. Especially if you've got something. Now keep in mind, like we said, you know, use this recipe obviously for beef. It's going to make uh, these, uh, let's have a look at this bay. So you see that butter starting to bubble up there. Want to make sure to just leave that for a minute. When, you, when the butter uh, reaches this point, it's going to start to get fragrant. And it's at this point, you just want to wait a minute. Just brown that butter just a little bit. Roll it around in the pan. Make sure it's ready to go. Now that olive oil is going to make sure that we both have flavor and a higher smoke point because we don't want this to burn. Now put her in there. Oh yeah, look at that. That is gorgeous. So just literally a little bit of, we'll just kind of coat it with that nice hot butter and oil. And I'll put some, uh, oh actually the uh, pepper, so we'll put some fresh ground black pepper. If you have a chance, use fresh ground. Those little berries, as soon as you add that grind and that little bit of heat, uh, it'll absolutely ignite that uh, pepper flavor. And then seasoning in the, in the beginning is really important. Because what you do is you start to draw the, draw the water, and you'll be sure to uh, to begin to caramelize quick. Now, guys, I've got this on. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. Let's have a look at these potatoes while you're here. So what I did, I started in cold water. Got some brand new new potatoes. So this is a beautiful time of year to be able to enjoy this kind of fresh vegetables. They're just perfect. So. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them right here on this pan. So this is uh, this is Lodge. This is not cast iron, but this is their carbon steel, and I love it for roasting. First thing I'm going to do is literally just put these out. It's really nice for going camping. It's a lot. It's a lot lighter than uh, cast iron. So it's a nice option, eh? So what I want to do, I'm just going to set a couple of these aside. Now for these smashed potatoes, I know you're going to love this. What you have to do is you don't need the real little guys. It's nice to have kind of bigger ones in, for this uh, application. We just kind of arrange them like this. We'll let them cool down just a little bit. But what we're going to do, these are fully cooked and fully seasoned. Now, I could just serve them like this, yeah. but we're going to take it one step further. Um, come on over here. Now, we will make sure when we uh, set this up, we are going to use uh, convection roast. Now, convection roast, if you have conv uh, convection oven at home, the difference between just a straight bake and convection is that fan moves yep. the air around all through the oven, yep. really completing or getting around all around the product, yep. and you can cook at a little bit lower temperature. Yeah, well, it's going to be about what, 25 percent hotter? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, about yeah. You drop like if it's 350, oh, sorry, 25 degrees. 25 degrees cooler. That's right. Uh, so, but I really potatoes, they can take the heat. I'm going to throw this on 450 and we're going to light these babies up. The, what's going to make these so nice is that beautiful soft texture is going to begin to be transformed as we throw the heat on and wait till you see how we finish it. You know what, I, I think this is a time for a commercial break. Commercial break? Yeah. Are you thirsty? Brought to you by, <laughs> sorry, what's that, Sid? Okay, so. Yeah, oh, go ahead. You take it away. It's a very nice mixed drink that was mixed by my, no, it was not mixed by myself. It was mixed by a brewmaster, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Four very special ingredients. So we're actually going to do something that's really simple tonight. And it's, you know, it's how to pour a beer. You know, it's one of those things that not a lot of people actually know how to do. And there's 
there is a right way to do it, and a lot of bartenders don't do it right. No. I'm going to show you why. I'm just going to grab my glasses. And I can grab it for you. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to show, show us, you. Show us that bottle opener first from Vortex. Oh, yeah. This, see that if you're a sheep hunter, you love this bottle opener. It's a ram's horn. <laughs> Pretty dirty. I got one of those on my keychain. I don't go anywhere without it. All right. So frosted glasses, which I love. You always want to start with frosted glasses. What's going to happen is if you pull a glass out of the cupboard immediately, your beer is going to start to go warmer, and you want that to stay as cold as it possibly can. Yeah, temperature is really important when you're enjoying beer. And, you know, the, that Bavarian uh, purity law, that's oh, where yeah. it all began. Right? I mean, it starts with four ingredients. The Bavarian purity law, it's just hops, yeast, barley, and uh, a little bit of water. Yep. I mean, exactly. how simple is it? So I'm going to show you here, guys. So what you see right at the bars is you see the bartenders just letting it drip into the glass, right? Creating no foam. Nobody likes foam, right? I'm going to show you why. When you're at the bar, that's not what you want. You want foam. So if I go like this and I pour this beer, get in close here. And I just, I ever so slightly let it just gracefully fall into that glass. Don't want to create any foam. Foam is bad. Now, I just want to point out, Back I don't know up. how he became an expert at this, okay? Back up. You might create some foam. It'll be a bad thing. So, right, this is how most are served at the bar, right? That is bad. You're like, oh, oh wow, it's great. You didn't oh, waste God. anything. Didn't waste well done. Beer. Well done. Thanks. Okay, so you get this to your table, right? So imagine, I sit down, I'm ready to have down, my beer. Ready to have a beer, right? Yep. Your first sip you take, right? That didn't get any foam. This is what happens when it hits your stomach. That's in your belly. That's in your belly. As soon as it hits your stomach, that's just going to foam up and fill your stomach with a bunch of foam anyways. And yep. know what's going to happen? You're going to go, Bleh! and it's just going to fill your belly. You know when you go, oh, man, I'm feeling a little bloated. That's why you just had a bunch of CO2 explode in your stomach. Now, listen, I want to tell you now, we're, we're so very grateful for uh, everybody at Botech. But our fearless leader, uh, Tim Glom, was on last night with our good buddy, Nate. Yep. And I saw him having a cold one. I thought to myself, you know, he's really leading us down the garden path, <laughs> isn't he? Now, we've been testing this all afternoon. But what we thought, you know, when you're having meatloaf, that's comfort food. And when you're having a really nice, yeah, put some of that in there, absolutely. I was actually going to deglaze. You jumped ahead, my deglaze. <laughs> We're deglazing right here. Getting all that flavor, developing that in the bottom of the pan. But... Um, you know, we were thinking this is the way that this is the way we eat kind of every day. Yep. You make food for large groups of people, food that tastes good, and let's face it, with that, uh, with a nice cold beer, there's nothing quite like it. So I won't show you. I won't give you uh, the wrong way to do it, not teach you the right way. So the right way to pour a beer is you do want a little bit of foam, not too much. What you saw there is too much foam. You're going to end up with too much. So if you have uh, a hoppier beer like this beer here has more hops. So what happens is, is that if you create that foam, a lot of those hops are going to get trapped in that foam on top. So when you take a sip, you're going to get a really nice balance between the beer and the hops with the foam and everything together. So this is how you would properly do it. When you're pouring, you want to create a little foam. So when you pour, you just want to you just want to let it go a little bit further and tip back and forth, just creating a little bit more of that foam. That's a beautiful pour. You know what it reminds me of? What do you, you know when we're in the rapids? What's that? The the, the oh, an eddy like a no when the back oh, water way turns up a, the, yeah. the hydraulic. Hydraulic. Yep. You create a bit of a hydraulic there. Yep. It creates a little bit of activity. Yep. So I don't. We're not splitting atoms here. Okay, yep. on Surefire so, or on Surefire Wednesdays, but we are creating beer hydraulics. So cheers to you. But it's better for it to happen in the glass than in your stomach, because all that's going to make is you won't be able to drink as much beer. And so it, and that's never sucks, a good thing. It sucks being camera man when everyone else is cracking a beer. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so the beer, we used it to deglaze. Now I've got one of the secret ingredients for me, which is chicken stock. Listen, in a uh, restaurant, in a professional kitchen, you are never without chicken stock. You are never without beef stock. Um, whether it's store-bought or whether it's something that you've made, um, either way, you're going to get extra flavor. So this gives you that level of flavor. Now let's have a look in here again. I'm going to bring all that up. And what's going to happen is as this continues to cook, that liquid is going to reduce. And when it reduces, it's going to concentrate. That concentrated flavor, along with that beautiful combination of flavors, is going to make our meatloaf exceptional. How are we doing, guys? Doing good? Doing good. All right. Got any more questions? I want to hear from you right now. 
Throw us a yeah. few hearts. Throw us a few likes. Let us know we're speaking to you. Um, listen, we've got some things to, uh, we got some business to attend to because we've got some giveaways. Now, I want to put this out to you right now. You need to, to uh, enter this. All you have to do is like this broadcast, share this broadcast. Uh, tell us why you need. It's going to be this grill pan. Don't grab this, it's hot. This <laughs> grill and griddle pan and this awesome loaf pan from Lodge. There we go. From Lodge Cast Iron, made in America, as tough as America is. And uh, listen, we've also got that $50 Botech gift card. Yeah. That means you can go on a spending spree. It's hunting season, and now for 50 bucks, you can have your way on the yeah. Botech site. Or if you if you guys like apparel, you get beautiful shirts just like this. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. They don't make you look like that, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, what do we got to do now? I got to check my notes here. Yeah, check so, your notes. But, okay. Smash potatoes. So let's show smash potatoes. Uh, potatoes. This is my profession. Yes. So, yeah, Bailey. Bailey's nickname is Sasquatch for a reason. So, this is literally what you do. Literally, just press it down. Okay, I don't want to crush it too far. Just like this. Just literally smash them. Not too far. Like, don't like Sasquatch it. Okay, please. Just bust them open. Just bust them open. And this is what's so great about leaving the skin on. That skin is going to be crispy. It's going to be so. There's going to be so much flavor. So you see this? Look at this. Oh man, I love doing this. This is something kids love to do. And this is... Now listen, I'm going to tell you right now how we're finishing this. Because I don't want you to think, oh man, I, that's just regular that's old awesome. potatoes. Okay, so smashed potatoes. There we go. We're going to finish these with some beautiful fresh uh, chives and fresh right. Parmesan. It's going to be a beautiful finish. So, all we want to do now, we want olive oil. Now... I had asked, uh, we were looking to pull up some uh, goose fat, or bear fat would be perfect for this. Now, I want a significant amount of oil on there. Yeah, we actually, while you're on that note, we actually did a recipe a couple weeks ago where we did bear fat potatoes. And if you guys want, you can go back and look at that on Botech's website or yeah. just scroll through their news feed. BotechArchery.com, right? Botech That's Archery. where you can see com. all of our previous broadcasts. I think we've got at least 20 yeah. great recipes going across big game and fish and uh, and turkey, right? We did yeah. uh, a grouse as well. Yeah, and techniques too. If you guys collect all the techniques we share with you guys over these videos, at the end of it, you'll have yourself quite a little technique cookbook if you think about it so we've got the potatoes they smell great can you put uh, just strip off some of this yep. we're literally just going to put some of this beautiful fresh thyme on now i'm not going to put the the chives on right now chives are something that are really nice to add fresh something like a spring onion very bright very fresh if you roast them they'll just disappear you're not going to get any value out of that at all so I'm going to look at this uh, for a sec here, Dakota. So this is continuing to reduce. That looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to put some pepper on these. If you guys are uh, watching, uh, take a second to uh, type in the comment section there. Let us know if you have a favorite whitetail story. If you want to let us know about your first whitetail hunt. Or even if you guys have any tips. We'd love to hear that stuff, and we definitely want to hear your guys' stories. We love hearing from you guys. Any questions, anything like that, you guys have that, that uh, format there to get in contact with us and just let us know. So I've got these uh, shallots. Now, what I'm doing, Bay, is I'm just literally quartering them. And you know what it's like, eh, when you roast onions. Oh, yeah. These things together are just absolutely, they make each other so happy. Yeah. Like, potatoes and onions together, they make each other happy. Very, very happy. Just put these on. Look at this. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And you know what serve, I love? Serve that at your dinner party and see what people say. It's 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 unbelievable. Oh, you're having dinner parties, are you? Yeah, it's a dinner party. <laughs> okay, let's go to the oven with this. Uh, one great thing about the uh, the cat or the um, carbon steel is it will heat up very fast. So you see that oven? Look at that, smoking hot, right? And I'll tell you one thing. I'm just gonna grab this. Hopefully I can do this. I'm going to just drop that. Whenever you're setting up your oven, so you've got, you know, the high and the low, when I'm going to convection roast, I want to get it dead center, right in the middle of the oven. 
as best as I can. Now, I've got this beautiful Fulgore Milano range. This thing is incredibly powerful. It's like a, um, it's like a restaurant type of oven. Now listen, at home, what you might find every now and then is near the back or near the front, you might find it begins to finish first before uh, the other side. All you have to do is just this. Literally, through the cooking, just turn it around. Yep. Just spin it around so that you get nice, even cooking. Now listen, we're going to be able to show you these before we wrap up. So let's, uh, let's close that up and uh, let those fire away. I think it's time to, uh, now, let's, this is almost dry. Yeah, that's, that's almost dry. We'll let that continue to cook for a minute. I think what we'll do is we'll take a trip out and talk a little bit about uh, what's going on out in the garage. That's the best part. Yeah, so <laughs> everybody, we're in hunting season right now. Everybody knows it. We're all excited. And so what we want to do tonight is just kind of uh, give you a, an inside look into our hunting season, what we're up to, what we're doing, what we're using, why we're using it. We just wanted to show you all those little things. So let's start, obviously, the canoe in the room. <laughs> the canoe, in the, the canoe in the room are these two beautiful Eskip canoes, right? We were up, I don't know if you saw our live from last week, we were up in Frampton, Quebec, picking these bad boys up. Yeah. Now let me tell you, these things, we went up to the factory, we try and partner with true, honest people, and let me tell you, these people, these canoes are handmade in Quebec. Yeah. They are the most incredible canoes. These are cargo canoes, so we're taking these up to Moose Camp. They can hold a thousand pounds each so we got two thousand pounds and the two and they only weigh 97 pounds 95 pounds so i mean pounds. i can pick one of these up myself and put it over my head and then obviously we're powering it with our honda vf4s there the reason we have a motor on the back is because going down river isn't necessarily a big problem but coming back up river with roughly two thousand pounds of gear that's a, it, lot, of that's a lot of work to be work. paddling up with uh, with you know, one boat only having one guy in it, so he's not yeah. gonna he's not gonna paddle a thousand pounds right back up river. So that's why we're using uh, outboard motors on these freighter style canoes. Yeah, and, the, and these canoes can can take it too with these BF fours. There's oh, no yeah. trouble carrying it on. And honestly, they're the best. Like we we showed up at their factory and we walked in, yeah. and they were carving everything with hand tools. Yeah. And it was amazing. It was amazing. So and then we'll start. We want to just go through our, all our little stuff. So we pick up, these are really nice to use. This is what we use for our PFDs, is just auto inflate. They're important in the environment that we're stepping into because, because we're going to be shooting a little bit of maybe class two, between class two and four rapids. We want to make sure that, you know, if, if worst case scenario, we fall out of the boat, hit our head, as soon as the water hits, this uh, PFD, it's going to inflate and hold our heads above water until someone can help us out, right? So that's why we're using the auto inflatable PFDs. All right, I'd like to interrupt oh, this right. uh, for a moment. Have a look at this. All of that stock, you see that kind of glossy, beautiful in there? All that stock is reduced. I wish you could smell this. Oh, this smells like you want to take a scoop out of that. Oh. What's going to happen is that is literally, that is going to transfer into all that beautiful venison. I'm going to go back to the kitchen, and I'm going to get this cooled down. So when we're back, we can yeah. bring it together. Keep rolling. So you'll see here we got jerry cans. Now, the jerry cans over there for fuel are just a couple. We have to take about uh, 12 jerry cans up there, 23 liters each, to make this entire trek. Just the amount of space to go into our camp is about 200 kilometers downriver. So we got to make it to our camp, all hunt moose and bear, traveling around, then make it back to where the truck is parked. So we got to have a ton of fuel. So that's how we're packing them is with the uh, two jerry cans there. You'll see we're taking a uh, this Honda EU 2009, which is a really nice generator. Obviously, we're filming uh, for our television show while we're up there, so we got to be able to power our camera equipment and everything. So this is a nice, really small little generator to get the job done. And one of the things you can definitely see now, listen, I'm pretty excited. <coughs> we, of course, we have, um, it's going to be a really, really exciting fall. Um, you know, this really began uh, a year ago, said putting all these things oh, in motion yeah. for us. Um, so we've got we've got two black bear tags. Yep. We got six white tail tags. We got three bull moose bull tags. Moose tags yep. We got six turkey tags. 
things. Yeah. We, we're going to be hunting small game as well. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing grouse, ptarmigan. Yeah, up there we got ptarmigan, we got red fox, wolves, all kinds of stuff. So now, it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, if you've watched The Outdoor Chef, you know our colors. Yeah. Our colors are, are, are gold and black. <laughs> I just want to point out my brand new arrows. I don't want to say they were made for me, <laughs> but it kind of feels like they were. Um, so you'll see this is, uh, and we'll play a little video in a minute. Uh, you'll see this is the Bowtech Rain, the Bowtech uh, Rain 7. Yep. Uh, this is the bow that I used to take my very first whitetail. Yep. Uh, something that I will absolutely never forget. Um, being a bow hunter, and I love, I love hunting with shotguns and rifles. Yeah, me too. I love, yeah. I love the full spectrum, but I have to tell you, there is nothing like the discipline. Have a look up there. Our warthog, uh, warthog uh, tar archery targets. Uh, there is nothing like the discipline of you know literally yeah. every day going through practice, the mechanism, practice, practice. Uh, the muscle memory, the discipline of practicing. Matter of fact, this is a really good time to tell everybody. You've seen our set for the boat the past six months. Yep. We have something very special to share with you. Yep. We're moving to a farm. And yep. We're pumped about it. <laughs> so listen, uh, we are literally, you'll notice around here, we're even, we're, everything's getting packed up. We are going to be able to share a much yep. bigger story for you. Right now, we're having a 100-yard range uh, yeah, put in. Put in yep. We're going to be able to shoot out there. We're going to be able to uh, practice with well, the, everything. The biggest thing is we'll be able to bring you... The, the tips in the kitchen are great and on the barbecue are great, but we're putting in a five to ten acre garden. garden. So I mean, Big we're going to be able to show you how to grow your own crop so you can completely rely off the land if you choose to. You can hunt your own game and grow your own vegetables if you want to. And if you happen to be in the city, we're also going to do something else. We're going to do what we're calling our postage stamp garden. Yep. Uh, we're going to do a garden that's going to show you with just a few seeds how you can yield probably a thousand dollars worth of food yep. that you can store. So listen, we are the Outdoor Chefs of Wild to Table. We are all about everything every aspect of food yep. and we are so excited to be able to show an ongoing story with you and many thanks to all of our incredible partners uh, Bowtech Archery in particular but uh, Honda, oh, yeah. Sitka Gear, yep. uh, help me out, Lodge Cast Irons, Willing, Cuisinart, yep. uh, Grizzly Coolers, we literally Carhartt <laughs> and Dungarees, we couldn't do it without Vortex Optics, I mean, been with us from the start. Our Grizzly Cooler fits real nice in this canoe. It really does. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it looks good. There's yeah. a gold black, again. Again, look at that Outdoor Chef logo. Now, like, when we go up there, we're talking, we're going to be in a place called the Hudson's Bay Lowlands. And so it's, what would you say, probably about 2,000 kilometers north of here? Uh, uh, yeah, not quite. 1,500, 1500 kilometers yeah. north of here. So yeah. the temperatures are already low up there. So by the time we get up there to do our moose hunt, temperatures are going to be low enough to basically almost keep this meat at just in game bags in the canoe. Yeah. So all that right there is going to be full of pickerel yep. and grouse. And small game. Yep. I'll be after a varying hair, cottontail, yep. yep. all kinds of really exciting things. Really so, fun stuff. So anyway, we're love, we love the fact that you're, uh, that you're joining us. If you're just joining us or if you're just tuning in, uh, we have a $50 Bowtech gift card to give away. Yep. And all you have to do is like this broadcast, share the broadcast, and tell us why you need that $50 Bowtech gift card. Also, uh, the Lodge Cast Iron, we're giving away the griddle and that loaf pan, which is going to yep. be perfect whether you're making a bread quick bread or, yep. or, uh, or doing like tonight, you're doing a wild venison meatloaf. So I know we've got some great uh, uh, trail cam footage. So let's, uh, let's have a little uh, powwow here. We'll check out, um, check out this footage because you're going to love this. I think... The most exciting thing about trail cam footage is just that window oh, yeah. into what goes on when you're out there. I'll tell you what, let's let's start off with something a little lighter. Let's show them the, uh, the, the, the ring-tailed uh, critters. <laughs> so this is a, a family of critters. Are you looking at this? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and I all think these little babies. There. All these little yeah. babies. So, you know, this is the best part about uh, hunting, I think, is that window into the outdoors. This is where hunters really are the conservation people. We're the voice in the uh, in the outdoors, and I'm yeah. telling you, this... Like this, a little scurry away there. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, guys, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
And then, so this is now, this is now, we're just rolling here now yeah. with this, with this, uh, these, this is a bachelor party, right? Yeah, this yeah, is some a young bachelor bucks. party that's going on here. We got about three bucks. You'll see one in the forefront there, one, and then a couple in the background. Now, there's some pretty cool deer in this group here. Uh, you'll see the one in the back there is actually, one side is just a little spike. He's got like two little He's nubs. Got He's got two little nubs in the back there, but a huge rack on that right side. So that's really exciting. He's a non-typical. We've never seen that deer on this property before, so that's exciting. We thought in honor of Tim, we might call him like lopsided Louie. Because he had lopsided <laughs> uh, Larry. Larry. Yep. <laughs> so you can see this property is very active. This is one of several properties that, yep. that we work. This is our uh, one of our base farms that's got over a thousand acres yeah uh, you know we don't uh, we don't hunt uh, with uh, outfitters no nope. um, because uh, we're really trying to show the I hate that word DIY yeah but yeah it's it's the it's you doing a hunt yep. you know like there's you don't you know it's extremely expensive and and access is tough yep. so what you have to do and and that's one of the things I think Sean uh, who was just on before us? Yeah, you know he he takes a great deal of pride public in, land in public land. Um, and Steve Ranella too. I just yeah. saw a piece. He's, oh yeah. You know, like these guys are leaders, and we're following their their lead. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what you can get on public land. Well, and there's tons of public land available to you. Like here in Ontario, for us, we have millions of acres of public land. The the WMU where we're going is literally 125,000 square kilometers yeah. of public land. And it's just, that's just one WMU. So we're on public land hunting three bull moose and two black bears. So yeah. I mean, if we, if we even get one bull moose and one black bear, that will be a huge accomplishment. It will be. And it'll be something like you plan for the best. Yeah. You always do. You don't get frustrated by whether your, you know, your success is not measured by whether you have a kill or not. Yeah. Your success is measured on what you're able to accomplish because there is a learning curve. Yeah. And uh, and so anyway, talking about learning curves, why don't yeah. we check? You want to have a look at some yeah, of this? Yeah, sure. check on the food. I'm going to check on the food yeah. and uh, you talk shop uh, for a little bit. We'll just show you. We'll keep touching on uh we'll keep touching on a few of the things that we're using this season now last season which we, we found these magnus broadheads and i mean dude just check those out look at them they're bad they're dirty look at those so those are getting the job done and a little uh, quick tip i want to show you here so you'll notice this little thing here and you've all seen these so you actually see this one's dying this is a luminoc for the end of your arrow here you can see this one's dying so they, a lot of time the batteries are extremely expensive to replace or some companies don't even have batteries for these. So a little thing to look for next time you go into your, uh, your local outfitter shop like Cabela's or Bass Pro is ask for these and where you're going to find these is in the fishing section. And what these are are actually they're float lights for uh, buoys for uh, fishermen. So look pretty identical right they are they're the exact same thing so you just have to pull this battery out and replace it with that these are uh, five bucks in Canada so in the US you know that's gonna be two bucks it'll cost you about two dollars so I mean that that's a steal you wanna have a little fun oh yeah we gotta have some fun okay now, guys so you probably saw us do this test last week this is a front this is the front of one of these canoes they were kind enough to give us a front to beat up and so yeah. these canoes are made out of something called T Formex, yeah. and it's something that they developed as gift themselves. They developed it themselves from scratch. And so you can see this design here, and then hit it. Hit it. You gotta hold it. Okay. You gotta do what I did. So I hey, do me a out. favor and don't chip a tooth, okay? I won't. I won't do that twice. Okay. <laughs> Ready? So you can beat on this thing harder. There we go. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> nothing. 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 This stuff is hard as nails. You can yep. literally wrap it around a rock. And even if you, they have a picture of it. Even if you wrap it around a rock, bend it around the rock, you heat it up. It'll come back. It'll come right back to its original form. Yeah. So what, so what this is, it's actually two layers. And they heat it up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And when they do that, that layer expands within and makes it rock hard. Alright, guys, now we gotta get started on our charred tomato gravy. 
So, doesn't that smell good? So you can see here, this is cooled off nicely. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add some rice to that. I'll add a couple cups of rice. Uh, I wanna try that, I didn't get to try that. It tastes amazing. And then what I want you to do, babe, yeah. is I'm literally gonna take and we're gonna pour this in. Mm. So red that meat is, eh? And just take your time, don't, don't overwork it, but just Makes bring sense. that together nicely and the coaches have a good look at that see how that comes together you want any herbs in here uh no we've got some some pretty good flavorings going in there right now just keep turning that over mix it thoroughly and you know what i think based on how much is in there let's uh let's add a bit more of this rice yeah go for it yep so you're not really cutting any flavor the rice is going to absorb a ton of that flavor it's going to look good it's going to taste good now let's put this charred tomato together. So one of the great things about things like tomatoes and onions is that can, they can take a ton of heat. So what I'm gonna do is literally, I'm just gonna take, and this is so simple, I'm gonna quarter these tomatoes, take the stems out. Now, remember that griddle that we're giving away tonight, I've got that heated up in behind me here. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil yeah, and a perfect side note for this uh, grill we're giving away, a lot of people like to think that cast iron is mostly used for the campfire or anything like that. We have this thing in our kitchen, on the stove top, ready to be cooked on. All this, the time. And this is great if you got things like these, these little burners where a lot of the food kind of finds their way in there and makes a mess. This is real easy to clean, and with the Lodge cast iron, it's insanely easy to season this cast iron. All you gotta do is give it a wash down, get all of that stuff off there, and then dry it off and hit it with some oil, or, any, or you know, and then bake it off, and then you have perfect cast iron, won't rust, and it's a lot easier to clean up than trying to get in there in your stove. I've got a, I've got a jalapeno here as well. I love the heat, I'm gonna leave the seeds in. We'll just toss that right on. Notice I'm just giving it a nice little coating of oil. We're gonna turn it over. This will cook so fast. I love this type of cooking because this is the type of thing you can easily do at the campfire. Now, with the onion, I'm simply going to trim both ends. Yes, yeah, a question. You got a question on? Uh, it's okay. good. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a Man, really that's old idea. school. Thank you for that tip. That's, that's a, awesome. That's a good way because we have uh, dough tags yeah. this year. It'd be interesting to take a dough and then try and do that and see if it brings the box. And that'd be yeah. actually really interesting to try. Yeah, it's funny. It's I, good just, tip. I just read that in Outdoor Life. Well, yeah, and, and, yeah. but you know who... Are you what? from Outdoor Life? Be honest. <laughs> no, but you know who I was talking to? When we were at ATA, uh, everybody has used uh, tanks, I'm sure. And so I ran into, I had the privilege of getting that. He was awesome, man. Right? Yeah, Tink, I mean, but he's old school boy. Big American flag shirt on. So <laughs> I was like, you know, like, how did you get started? And of course, he told me, you know, that was basically what they did, is they kind of dissected the, the yeah. does, and they began to understand, you know, what it was that the bucks were after. And so uh, one thing led to another. But actually, that just reminded me of what they did originally to uh, to get started with uh, tank so I'm gonna take this onion and I'm gonna just put that right on it's actually interesting because I've always wondered how they get that smell you know that those bucks like how they kind of extract that and get those goes to come yeah I've always wanted to know that we got lots of tomatoes on there and the only thing you have to watch see that tomato charring I want that I don't want it to burn. So I just turn it over a few times. And uh, I've got a couple tomatoes. I've got an onion on there. Well, what this is going to do, I know you've had it. I know my mom did. And I'm sure that your mom did too. Um, your mom's here. She's right there. Is she? Oh, my mom's <laughs> here. I know she put, you put ketchup on the top of the meatloaf for sure, right? So the only thing that's different about this, is, can you pick up both that stuff? Sorry, buddy. The only thing that's different about this charred tomato sauce we're putting on top is rather than going to the sweetness of brown sugar and the ketchup and all the sugar, we're just trying to get something that elevates the flavor. So when you char the tomatoes and when you brown those onions, and what we're gonna do is just puree that, it's gonna make a beautiful topping for our top. And, and look at this, guys. Come look at these results that we're getting off this skillet in our kitchen from Lodge. If you guys want this pan, 
like this broadcast, share it, and let us know why you want this, what you want to cook with it, and we will be more than glad to send you guys one of these things. They're unbelievable. So I'm going to hit this with a little bit of salt. And if you want to hit it with some black pepper there, Bay. A little drizzle of olive oil again. Uh, the olive oil here is going to give it some nice texture. This would be the pan you want to deglaze to get all that flavor off the bottom. Okay, so here we go. Now, we've got our uh, mixture rolling. We've got our sauce rolling. It's time to make these beautiful you can see meat those, You should see those potatoes. Want to have a quick look? They Let's look check amazing. the potatoes. Okay, so what we're looking for is we want we just want to light these babies up. Normally I wouldn't open this up, but let's have a quick look inside. Oh, you yeah. see that color? All of that. So it's gonna have the <laughs> texture <laughs> of like a French fry on the outside yeah. and the texture of mashed potatoes on the inside. And you can see too the presentation on the plate, which is a big part of cooking. You always eat with your eyes before anything else. Okay. So if you have guests over, that's awesome. I'm you giving you a job. Out. You stay on this. I want it charred, but I don't want it burned. Now I'm going to start with this. Now I've got two different pans here. So we'll do two different applications. Now one of the things I get a lot of questions about when it comes to seasoning cast iron is how to care for it, how to look after it. Now both of these pans have been used. But what I did before tonight is I just used a little bit of vegetable oil and I baked them off so they went in the oven. You what did I, it, yes. I, yeah. I, I commissioned it, okay? Uh, so what He's a great delegator, guys. Hey, He's really good at it. Delegating is a difficult thing. <laughs> So literally all we're going to do is we're just going to tuck this in. You all know this step, but I'm telling you right now, that color, that flavor, those the, uh, the rice and that uh, beautiful carrots and celery and shallots, it's going to make a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous meatloaf. And like I said, keep in mind what you can do is you can make several of these in advance. As a matter of fact, what I've done often is I take this and I put some parchment in the bottom, I mold it just like this, and then what I'll do is uh, is take and, and unmold it and then freeze it so it's actually not even cooked. You can, you can freeze it raw or you can freeze it cooked. Either way, it's gonna be beautiful. If you've got any questions right now while we're doing this work, now is a perfect time. Remember, we've got a $50 Botech gift card. Yep, one's in. So that looks beautiful. And now what I've done is, if you want to do a version that you can serve wedges. So the wedges are kind of nice. I like this idea. So what we'll do is we'll literally put that in a round pan. A wedge meatloaf? Wedge meatloaf. So just like, imagine like cornbread. This will pop right out of this round, so we'll just press it down. Can you grab me that rice that's left there, Ben? Yeah. And what I'm going to do with that extra rice is uh, use a fork to break it up. If you need to break up the rice so it can be handled, just use a fork. So I want to make sure to press this together. There's going to be plenty of starch in there in the rice to bind it together. So no need for eggs. Right on top. And spread it evenly kind of on top. We'll just do a couple cool versions here. Just spread that evenly. I'll watch your, uh, let's have a look at these grilled vegetables here. Get a sense for what this, uh, what this is uh, supposed to look like here. Turning them over, no need to take any of the skin off. Charred tomatoes. You know, every time that you cook something, when you char it, it adds so much flavor and it changes the, uh, so instead of just that raw onion taste, a raw jalapeno, a raw tomato, uh, which can be good. What this does is just elevates it in a really special way. There we go. We'll keep charring those away. And uh, there, let's have a look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. Love that. So you can see this is a really, really good start. Have a look at these grains. So this is what it looked like pre-cooked. So you can see we've got uh, all different types. There's wild rice, brown rice, red rice. And so what I was talking to you before about levels of flavor, if you can bring together a number of different textures, a number of different flavors, all of that is going to end up in your meatloaf. Yeah. And start, uh, one thing that I learned, especially from learning to cook for you, is start to memorize what these different flavors are. Like take a, an uncooked onion and take a caramelized onion. 
Yep. Think of that flavor. And then when you're making something, oh, remember back, maybe that flavor would be good in this. And start slowly developing this format from which you can pull from when you're cooking. And you'll find in one short year, you'll be a, an amazing Your cook. brother's having beer while he's shooting. Yeah, I know. Switch, switch, switch out with him. Switch out with him for a second. Cameron's, <laughs> Cameron's going to be like, I got a snack on our You got a question, Mom? Okay, shoot. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, the bear fat, honestly, I was blown away by the consistency of the bear fat. So what we did is, as we as we uh, butchered the bear, we were careful to remove all the meat, separate the fat, got it chilled down right away. Um, I really believe... And any fat that didn't look right while you're on that point, any yeah. fat that didn't really look right, we didn't keep that stuff. No. So I really believe how you handle any wild game is the key to how it tastes. I know it just seems logical, but you know, you're not always thinking that. When you're out there hunting, there's a lot of things going on. You know, you can, you know, maybe you, you have to track the animal. Maybe you're in adverse weather conditions. Maybe you're fighting, you know, night, uh, dark or, or light it's situation. Three o'clock in the morning with a bear a hundred yards this way and, and a, a pack, pack of around. That was us. One. That was us. Exactly. We have the videos to prove it. So <laughs> preserving the the, the uh, integrity of it means handling it properly. So we got it chilled, we got it separated. When we got it home, we used low temperature to render the fat. It took all day. Yeah. And what came out, if you check out that previous recipe, yeah. what came out looked like a little bit like goose fat, a yeah. little bit like pork fat. It tasted so good. And when it went firm, it was just like yeah. butter. Butter. And, I, and to answer your question of gaminess, that night we had a big crowd here. We had my girlfriend, all of our moms and everything like that. They all tried it and they all loved it. So, and they're they're not. If something was really gamey, they may not like it, but they were eating that stuff like it was candy. And we poured it on top of those potatoes, and it was good. <laughs> swap out. Yeah, and so that's really the key. Right? If as hunters and anglers, what we want to do is we want to be able to share this food with everybody in our lives. And one of the most important things we can do is make it palatable. So, if you can do something that's very familiar, like a meatloaf. It can be something that's so good that maybe you can even get your mom to try venison. <laughs> Listen, uh, while we're cooking here for a minute, I want to take a minute to thank all the important people in our life. I want to thank all of our family members, my lovely wife Cynthia, who always makes sure everything looks amazing for us, who makes the job easier uh, for uh, my parents, my uh, my in-laws, my outlaws, and everybody in between. We, uh, we're so thankful for our family. Um, and really excited to share this with you. And, uh, and again, uh, a big thanks to all of our partners, yeah. uh, whether it's uh, culinary partners or partners in the outdoors. Yeah. We couldn't do it without you, but this is by far the best job yes. in the entire yeah. world. And we're very grateful. Yep. And hopefully next week, guys, you're going to want to text that watch to 313131 yes. if you're in the States and 393939 if you're in Canada because next week when we're whitetail hunting, we're going to try and come to you live. Yeah. We've tested it. We have service where we're hunting. So 100%. we have a deer come in next week, which from what you saw in those videos is very probable. Yep. We're going to bring a live hunt to you. Yeah, and so the hunts are going to go like this. So we've got this great system of... Uh, of you know, kind of a rotation yep. between there's between us guys and then the girls. So I went first. I don't know how that happened, but I went first, <laughs> and then you went. I don't know how that happened. I think yeah. it was an age thing. So Bailey hasn't uh, uh, shot a white tail yet. So no, he, his first is yep. coming. He's first up. He's in the hot seat. He's ready to roll. So we want to bring you the live hunt. Now we're. By the way, all of our content is available at My Outdoor TV. Yep. My Outdoor TV is our broadcast partner, has been there for us right from the beginning. You can go there, we've got over tw uh, two dozen yep. recipes on My Outdoor TV, and we've got, right now, we've got another couple dozen yeah. to add. They're going to be coming up in the next couple weeks. You want to pick up that gorgeous yeah, show, show them my, uh, my outfit. Oh, there, okay. Guys. This is my outfit. I'm set up on the Diamond Deploy SV. Yep. An amazing he's got color. he's rocking the outdoor chef colors too. He's too. got the gold and white here. That I like the white, so I yeah. can see if I if I got the red chef. We got all retooled this week at Archer's Nook here in London to get retooled and ready to go for the season. We got oh, some nice. nice FMJs on there. 
Oh yeah, and then my these... my amazing sister in law has got into leather working and she makes us all these amazing little things that fit us out in the outdoors. This one was one my bow holder. Yep. It's awesome. They even got my nickname tattooed on their Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things, you know what, uh, I want to just touch on, this is almost finished. Yep. I want to touch on some of the, uh, I guess some of the nonsense that we've kind of dealt with in, uh, uh, in the outdoors world in terms of how we support each other. Yep. So listen, I'm gonna, just going to tell you straight. If you've got new hunters, you've got old hunters, there's about a hundred different ways to skin a cat. Yep. There's about a thousand different ways to hunt wild game. Yep. So what I want you to, to encourage you to do is support your local or support your fellow outdoors men and women. Yep. We're in this together. We're protecting our history. We're protecting a legacy yep. and we're creating something and we're a steward over something that we're going to give to those in the future. I've got young kids. You've got young kids. Yep. So let's stick together. We're a tight-knit community. Let's keep it that way. And let's find ways to change the world around us in really powerful ways, uh, one meatloaf at a time. <laughs> I want to I wanna see, before the night's over, I want to see that video we got of last year's hunt of your whitetail. I want to see that tonight. Actually, you know what? Why don't we do that? Let's cue okay. that up. We're going to cue up a little piece we did last year. While they're doing that, I'm going to get this charred tomato sauce ready. Head up there and uh, have a look. I love our shop too in here. This is the best shop. Half of it's packed up, like Dad said, we're moving, but this is our amazing shop. Yeah, our new shop is gonna be about twice the size of this yeah, one. This is this is where we work, so we're constantly reminded of who keeps us going and all of our great partners. Yep. So this hunt is actually from last year. The this hunt was uh, my dad's hunt and he was hunting with the Rain Seven. There we go here guys. Do whatever it takes to set me free. And this was a late season hunt. It was so cold. It wasn't even funny, guys. This this year we were hunting in almost minus 30 degree weather. This was in December. Do whatever it takes to set me free. I do everything to get what I need. You got him. My first white tail. Oh, the rain seven. That was so smooth. I felt like in that moment that there was no distance between the trigger, the string my arrow and that beautiful beautiful buck oh, 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 oh. the time is now or never there's nothing else forever on his face there that's what it's all about and this year like my dad said Bailey is up first so I can guarantee you Bailey's been always a little bit of a not a softy, but he has a very he has a very fond heart for animals. So I can guarantee you he's going to be very emotional when it comes time, and that's okay, guys. I mean, that's what it's about. If you don't have that, I don't think it's you know it, it doesn't mean anything to you. It doesn't mean anything to you, and yeah. you can see in that moment when he was sitting there in that tree stand, it meant so much to him yeah. to take that animal, to harvest that animal, to have the meat for his family, to have all of that. Yeah. Well, the excitement to what happens when all of a sudden you're responsible for for uh, for for gutting and for quartering for uh, then butchering uh, the whitetail yeah and responsible for a life and yeah exactly so yeah. it's something that I li listen like I honestly as I was saying earlier I can't wait to share all the recipes yeah. this year all the experiences but you know what let's have a look at what now these potatoes are ready to ready roll to in here I just want to say one thing Cody you take this camera for a second I want to say one thing that really stuck with me always yeah. when we took our hunter education course our teacher Emot he's a great guy and uh, he said no matter what you're doing in the outdoors when you're hunting he said every time you fling an arrow or shoot a bullet that your name flies with it and that that stuck right. with me that's right so much yeah absolutely 
Sorry, guys, it got a little sappy there for a second. What? <laughs> Watch yourself. I had okay. to apologize to him for getting too sappy there. For <laughs> That's okay. You guys don't have to be so mean. <laughs> so, let's do the reveal here. This is something I think you're going to love. Love, 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 love. So, nice and tight. You know, we've adopted this, uh, this military application and used it in the kitchen. Slow and smooth. Smooth as, smooth as fast. Yep. If you show these ingredients a little bit of love and take the time to finish them up, I don't know where you're going, but this and these are good close up. <laughs> you back see, over here. To you're not off the hook yet. So what I what I'm gonna do first of all is I want to um, in honor of the uh, the rain seven, um, just they just take and put that cork down there. And careful because this is screaming hot. Yep. So first of all, the nice thing about using uh, the steel is I don't have to race and, and fear that these will cool down for service. These are ready for service, they'll hold for service for a good long time. Now, what I want you to do, Bailey or uh, Dakota, whoever's up next, is literally just, look at this, we're gonna rain this parm down. Look at that. You just coat that baby, just make yeah. it look like a snowfall, will you? I will. Yes. Oh man, thanks, awesome. thanks for the so much, kind guys. words, it means a lot to us. Um, the cooking time, uh, they will take, you can literally, at 450, you're gonna be almost an hour, and they will literally, they'll just, they just keep taking the heat, taking the heat, and they're not gonna get dry, and they're gonna be beautiful. Look at that beautiful snow on there. Now, I'm gonna finish it with these fresh chives. Yeah. Nice rocking motion, this is gonna brighten them up, be nice and fresh. So you've got that beautiful saltiness from the Parmesan cheese. Yep. You could use pecorino. Listen, if you've got some nice aged cheddar, you can do that too. Oh, you smell that? Soon as the chives hit those yep. potatoes, the oils boom. Are released, eh? They're, They're, they just come heat. to life. Okay, so we're, we're solid there. Now, you know what, what it's time for? We gotta get some of this other stuff rolling here. So, here we go charred tomato now look at those ingredients in there now you could do this in a food processor you could chop it but the easiest way for me to do it is going to be using this uh, Cuisinart Hurricane Pro this is going to make short work of it I'll start off I just literally gonna light this baby up this for a second the reason why I want to use a blender rather than just chopping it up is for texture and to mix it all together I want to make sure all that now let's get a nice little close-up here coat let's have a look at this as I pull this off this is oh my gosh are you looking at that that is absolutely gorgeous so what I'm gonna do now so what this smells like it smells like charred onions beautiful roasted tomatoes and I get that jalapeno as well and so what I'll do is I'll just grab a ladle here and I'm going to take this and come check this out. I'm going to take this and I put this right on top. So that is going to be my beautiful coating on top. Yeah, forget the, the sugars and all the all that from ketchup. Take something that you can go out and get in your garden and turn it into something that you've never had before. Well, and keep in mind though, babe, right? Yeah. One of the things we did by sauteing this is we developed that sugar. Yeah. So it'll have a sweetness, but it'll have a really natural sweetness. So we'll take this. Can you drop that oven down to 350? Yep. We're going to take this. Now keep in mind, we're using rice because the rice is going to bring up and it's going to soak up any of that extra flavor, but any of the extra fat, any of the extra liquid as well. So this is just a beautiful topping. Now, you know you've had meatloaf. You know what happens to that. It's going to get nice and crisp on top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save the rest of that, and we'll use that for an actual gravy. But these, let's take these to the oven. Grab that one. So again, we'll tuck these in here. Meatloaf away. And again, guys, we got that loaf pan as a giveaway tonight. Like and share this broadcast. Tell us that why you want it. You could be cooking this exact recipe in your kitchen soon. So our good friends at Lodgecast Iron, remember Lodgecast Iron is made in the 
USA. We love that. It's got to be North American or we're not interested in it. Um, these recipes can be replicated easily. A few simple ingredients and the right tools make all the difference. Yep. The same is true when it comes to whether you're uh, using firearms or bows or boats or motors yep. or any of this. You want to eliminate frustration in the kitchen, you got to have the right tools and the right ingredients. And if you want to have success in the outdoors, you got to have the same thing. Yep, you got to have the right tools to get the job done. I think we actually got everything finished. I think we did. That's, I think it's the first time. That's really nice. I love these potatoes. I'm not touching these. We're going to take a picture of these. Yeah, so you guys are going to see this. With the, we're going to post the recipes as soon as we're done here, yeah. guys. We're going to wrap this up and take then we'll uh, and we'll take pictures of yeah. the finished product. Um, but again, we want to encourage you. Come back every week. Surefire Wednesdays is all about you. It's all about the viewers. Yeah. Do we have a question? Yeah, John. How long is it going to take? Meat, yeah, great question, Bill. So the meatloaf is going to take about 60 to 70 minutes to finish. Yep. What you can do is you can either just literally look at it. You want it to be completely cooked. So you can put an uh, internal probe thermometer. Yep. And if you get about 160, 165 degrees, that'll be fine. Yep. One thing you want to do, if you're going to serve it right away, give it 10, 15 minutes yeah. to rest. Oh, it's it, going to fall apart. Yeah, and besides, it's worked hard in there. It tastes good. It's ready to be eaten. Just give it a few minutes to chill. You waited you an started. hour, just wait that extra 10, it'll be so much better. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you want to make sure the other uh, telltale signs when it's finished is what does it look like? Does it, you know, has it developed a nice crust on top? Yep. It'll, it'll slightly separate from the sides of the cast iron. So as the meat cooks, it'll shrink just a little bit. You'll see lots of fat on the outside. What you can do is when you remove it, you can literally just set it on some paper towel or on a, on a, on a cloth. Um, my mom used to nearly kill me if I used this for anything other than drying dishes. <laughs> but it's really good for soaking up uh, extra fat or any extra liquid. Uh, but give it a chance to rest. Rest it covered if you can. It'll keep the heat. Yep, go for it. Um, keep in mind, all these make incredible leftovers. Uh, and uh, stay with us. Uh, like uh, Dakota said, so Sunday morning, again, take the time. Text WATCH to 313131 if you're in the United States. And text WATCH to 393939 if you are in Canada. We're going to be coming live to you. Hanging out at the top of a tree, looking at some beautiful whitetails, and that's just the beginning of this fall's hunt story. Remember, we're talking whitetail, moose, yep. wild turkey, grouse, you name it, Sun we're on it. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, one of these arrows is going to be red. Are you just, you just jinx yourself. I didn't jinx it. Okay, it's okay, called okay. Fate. <laughs> that's called fate, okay. okay. Yeah, well, so hopefully you we'll see you Sunday. It. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean Listen, uh, again, uh, for uh, Bailey uh, and Dakota and myself, our entire family, thank you for watching tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's great to come to your homes. Thank you to all the partners who share this all across these platforms. Uh, we're very grateful to be uh, in your ear tonight. Yep. Uh, thank you again uh, to the uh, giveaways uh, from Lodge and from Botech. And again, just like, share, and tell us why. Why don't you tag a friend? If you yeah. think somebody who loves to cook wild game might enjoy this broadcast, introduce them to the Outdoor Chef. We surely appreciate Come it. Come over to our pages, guys. Follow us what we're doing. We'd love to interact with you guys and help everyone be better cooks and generally just enjoy the outdoors more. Exactly. Have a great night, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Now we're going to eat. No, now we're going to take pictures. Now we're going to eat. Oh. <laughs>